so in the previous class we had seen about the operation of an oscilloscope okay so today in this class we'll see about the calibration of an oscilloscope so these are the steps that should be followed to calibrate an oscilloscope so first of all examine all the controls on your scope and set them to normal position so we had seen different types of controls on the front panel like uh, volts per division knob times per division knob x position y position intensity knob focus knob so you have to examine all the controls on the front panel of the oscilloscope and set them to normal position then turn on the oscilloscope to be on okay next set the volts per division control knob to 1 volt so this volts per division knob is used for increasing and decreasing the amplitude of the signal okay so this volts per division knob should be set it to 1 volt and this times per division knob is going to be set it to 1 millisecond so this times per division knob is used for increasing and decreasing the width of the signal okay. next set the trigger switch to auto mode we will be having the trigger switch on the front panel we have to keep that trigger switch in the auto mode auto mode means automatic so connect the probe to the input connector so we will be having the two channels channel 1 and channel 2 so we can take any one of the channel so we have to connect a probe a CRO probe to the input connector of any one of the channel and the other end of the CRO probe is connected to the calibration terminal so touch the end of the probe to the scopes calibration terminal so here this is the main point here sixth point and the seventh point we have to use a CRO probe and the one end of the CRO probe is connected to the input connector of one channel and the other end of the CRO probe is connected to the calibration terminal on the front panel of an oscilloscope then we are going to be getting a square waveform on the screen of the CRO so by properly adjusting that square waveform by using different front, pan front panel controls we can make the calibration of an oscilloscope in a proper way that is we can use the intensity knob focus knobs x position knob y position knob holes per division knob and times per division knob all these front panel controls are going to be used in a proper way in order to get the square waveform in a well fashioned manner so ultimately the oscilloscope is ready to measure the different types of signals that is we can analyze the different types of waveforms with respect to time so these are the points to be followed while calibrating an oscilloscope next coming to measurement reliability so what do you mean by reliability so if you take any product if the particular product will be having high reliability means we can use that product for a large number of years without any failure okay so for example if you take any system or any element so the particular system or element will be having its own level of working suppose if the particular system or element is going to be working to that level of functionality then we can call the reliability of that particular element or the system will be perfect so reliability is another important characteristics of a measurement system so up to now we have seen different characteristics of a measurement system like accuracy precision error so in the similar way this reliability also plays an important role while getting the characteristics of a measurement system or element so reliability of measurement system so in this reliability of measurement system mainly we are going to be studying about the fundamental principles of reliability and the reliability of practical systems failure rate data ways of improving reliability so these are the three points we are going to be studying in the measurement reliability so choose the system with the minimum total lifetime operating system so while choosing any measurement system we have to follow this one minimum total lifetime operating system so while operating that measurement system it will take some cost that cost should be minimum we are going to be choosing those systems whose operating cost is less throughout its lifetime okay. how to choose the most appropriate measurement system here so for example take one example here so that is initially a specification for the required application can be drawn up such as accuracy reliability etc and compared with the manufacturer's specification of the competing measurement system so in this case 
we can take one example here so for the measurement of the voltmeter we can use the voltmeter instrument so here our requirement is suppose if, if i want to measure uh, 0 volts to 1000 volts with an accuracy of plus or minus 1.3 percentage okay and the full scale reading should be 1000 volts here these are the three main requirements full scale reading is 1000 volts range of measuring the voltage is 0 to 1000 volts and the error within that instrument is plus or minus 1.3 percentage so based upon these three requirements we are going to be choosing different types of voltmeters by comparing these requirements with the specifications of that particular particular instrument here so suppose if our requirements are going to be uh, same as that of the specifications of the particular instrument then we are going to be choosing that voltmeter for the measurement of this voltage so in this way we can choose the particular measurement system for the measurement of the voltage that is initially a specification for the required application can be drawn up okay such as accuracy reliability etc and compare it with the manufacturer's specification of the competing measurement system so by comparing if the two are having the same requirements then we can choose the particular instrument for the measurement of the physical quantity okay so these are the fundamental principles of reliability first one is the probability so what is probability probability means may or may not of occurring an event suppose if a large number of random independent trials are made then the probability of a particular event occurring is given by the ratio probability p is equal to number of occurrence of the event to the total number of trials so for example if you take a coin so if you want if you raise a coin it may occur a trial or it may occur a head suppose if you try the coil for 100 number of times here so if you are going to be getting head for 30 times and the remaining 70 times are going to be taken as the trials here so the probability p is equal to number of occurrence of the event to the total number of trials so in this case the total number of trials are 100 and the number of occurrences of the event is 30 so the event is we have to get the head for the particular coin here so 30 times we are going to be getting the head of the particular coin so that is 30 by total number of trials are 100 then the probability will be equal to 0 0.3 so here if the number of times we are going to be getting the head of the particular coin is 100 times then the probability will be equal to 1 that is we can say that the occurrence of that particular event will be 100 times then the probability will be maximum of 1 percentage here okay so finally we can say that the probability means it may or may not of occurring an event so coming to reliability so we are going to be indicating the reliability as r of t r of t means the reliability is a function of time t okay so the probability that the element or system will operate to an agreed level of performance for a specified period subject to specified environmental conditions so the probability that is may or may not that the particular element or system has to operate to an agreed level of performance okay so for a specified period of time that is called as the reliability suppose if we take a product so if the product is having the good reliability then its working lifetime will be very good so for large number of years it will be working in a proper way okay. so coming to unreliability so unreliability is going to be indicated as f of t so it is also a function of time based upon the time t the unreliability of the product will be very so that is the probability that the element or system will fail to operate to an agreed level of performance for a specified period subject to specified environmental conditions that is called as the unreliability so here we have to you know, take the notation fail to operate so whereas reliability means it has to operate unreliability means fail to operate so both are opposite to each other so the equipment has either failed or not failed the sum of the reliability and unreliability must be unity that is r of t plus f of t is equal to 1 so reliability plus unreliability is equal to 1 here so for example take a product here 
like uh, an voltmeter instrument only so initially before purchasing that instrument voltmeter so they will be giving some guarantee period here for example if you take one year so for one year there is no problem with that voltmeter here then r of t will be equal to 1 for one year so after the completion of one year then it will take uh, one point uh, one year six months so within that one year six months uh, so this reliability will be gradually decreasing and unreliability will be gradually increasing here so as time passes uh, then the reliability will be completely becoming zero and unreliability will be completely becoming one so if you take any apparatus uh, the sum of the reliability and unreliability will be equal to one so before the purchasing that is after purchasing that particular equipment initially the r of t will be maximum and f of t will be minimum so as a time process r of t will become minimum and f of t will become maximum so finally the sum of r of t and f of t should be equal to one only okay. so coming to practical reliability definitions here so here up to now we had seen about the reliability and unreliability so this reliability and unreliability can be indicated as r of t and f of t so both are going to be the functions of time that is de depend upon the time t so in some practical reliability definitions we have to define some of the def some of the terms which are going to be independent of time so for that case we are going to be taking the two items so one is called as the repairable items other one is the is called as the non repairable items so for these items we are going to be giving some definitions which are used for analyzing the reliability so for non repairable items so non repairable items means like resistors ic chips integrated circuit chips capacitors so those components are going to be non repairable suppose if there is any problem is going to be obtained in those elements we cannot do any repair just we have to throw the, those elements outside so those are called as the non repairable items so for those non repairable items coming to the definition practical reliability definitions so coming to mttf mttf stands for mean time to failure it is defined as the ratio of total uptime to number of failures so here we will be having the two terms total uptime and the number of failures so total uptime is also called as the survival time so for example if you take any one component or any one system so if any one particular component or system is going to be working in a proper way for three months so we can take those three months as the total uptime or it is also called as survival time so after the completion of that time the component or system is going to be damaged or not working in a proper way okay so total uptime can also be called as the survival time so in this case mean time to failure can be defined as the ratio of total uptime to number of failures okay so coming to mean failure rate so rate means with respect to time we are going to be defining the failures so mean failure rate is the ratio of number of failures to the total uptime that can be defined as the mean failure rate here okay so these are the most popularly used formulas for getting the reliability of any product here. So for repairable items, mean downtime is equal to total downtime to number of failures. Okay. So here total downtime. So here for example if you take any product. So for non-repairable items, suppose if any product is going to be damaged, then we can make that product to be repairable and make that product to be used for any other purposes here so what is the amount of time taken for making that product to be working in a proper way that time is called as a total downtime so total downtime means it is called as a repairable time only so for non-repairable items if any product is going to be damaged or item is going to be damaged we are going to be doing some repair for that item or product so after the completion of the repair then the particular item or product is going to be used for the other purposes here so the time taken for making that the product to work in a proper way that time is called as the total downtime so mean downtime is equal to it is the ratio of total downtime to number of failures so total uptime is equal to net time minus total downtime or net time is equal to total uptime plus 
total downtime. Okay. So mean time between failures MTBF is equal to is the ratio of total uptime to number of failures. Mean failure rate is equal to it is the ratio of number of failures to total uptime here. Okay. So coming to availability. Availability means it is the ratio of total uptime to test interval. So test interval means it is the sum of total uptime and total downtime. So coming to unavailability, it is the ratio of total downtime to test interval. That is total downtime by total uptime plus total downtime. So in this case also, the sum of availability and unavailability should be equal to 1. So if you take the reliability, we can show that reliability graphically in this way. So as time is going to be increasing, the reliability of any product or item is going to be gradually decreasing here. Okay. So initially, the reliability of the particular product or item will be high. So if you use that particular element or system for a large number of days or years, the reliability will be gradually decreasing and we are going to be getting some repairs in that particular product or item. Okay. So this is the failure pattern for the non-repairable item. So if you compare the reliability and the unreliability, so both are going to be opposite to each other. So if you plot both reliability and unreliability graphically, so as a time pauses, the reliability is going to be gradually decreasing. Okay. So as a time pauses, the unreliability will be gradually increasing. So both are going to be opposite to each other. We can show the operations of this R of T and F of T graphically this way. So this is the reliability and unreliability with the constant failure right here. Okay. okay thank you.